Hi everyone, in this video we will learn how to install Docker Desktop on Windows 11. Docker is a platform designed to help developers build, share, and run container applications. Containerized applications have become more popular in recent times with companies such as Spotify, Pinterest, and Udemy utilizing Docker for their applications. Docker enables developers to package applications with all their dependencies into a standardized unit called a container, ensuring consistency across development, testing, and production environments. The program can simplify software deployment and scaling, improves resource efficiency, and can reduce conflicts between environments. Docker depends on Linux-specific kernel features. Docker Desktop launches a lightweight virtual machine running a Linux kernel on non-Linux hosts. On Windows, the virtual machine is provided by Windows Subsystem for Linux, also known as WSL. In the tutorial, we will first install Windows Subsystem for Linux, then we will install Docker Desktop. Please note, you can find all the PowerShell commands I run in the tutorial on GitHub. I link the script in the description below. Let us get into the tutorial. First, I am going to bring up PowerShell. I'm going to run it as an administrator. From the Docker documentation, we can see that Docker Desktop requires at least four gigabytes of random access memory or RAM. I'm going to run the command displayed on the screen to check the computer's RAM. The value is displayed in bytes. We can see that there is approximately 8 gigabytes of RAM for this computer. If you run this command and your RAM is less than the value displayed on the screen, then your computer will not be able to handle Docker Desktop. The next command I will run will enable Windows Subsystem for Linux. If WSL is enabled, you will get the message shown on the screen. Next, I will enable the virtual machine platform, which allows the system to run lightweight virtual machines, which is necessary for Docker Desktop. If it is successfully enabled, you should get this confirmation message. Now, I need to restart my computer for the changes to apply. Once my computer restarts, I am going to bring PowerShell up again. I am going to again run it as an administrator. After we have enabled WSL, we need to install it. This command installs WSL without a distribution. This is a minimal install, so we can just have WSL to access Docker Desktop. To double check that WSL was installed successfully, I can run WSL dash dash version in the PowerShell terminal. We can see that we have WSL version 2.5.9 installed. I am going to bring up the official Docker website in my browser. Please note, I link the official Docker website in the description below. For most people, the standard installer, which is Docker Desktop for Windows for the x86-64 chip, is going to be the one that you'll use. If you prefer the Microsoft Store, you can use that install. For the ARM install, usually tablets or single board computers like Raspberry Pis use this chipset rather than laptops or desktops. I will download the first option, Docker Desktop for Windows x86. The installer is a little over 500 megabytes, so it may take a minute or two to download. I am going to bring up the installer. Once you open up the installer, it starts to install itself on your computer. It took about five minutes for the installation to go through. At the end of the installation, Docker Desktop requires you to log out to finalize system level changes, such as registering internal WSL distributions and updating environment variables like path. I am going to close and log out. Logging back in, we have the Docker Terms of Agreement up. You need to accept it before you can start working with Docker Desktop. You can create an account if you'd like. I am going to skip this. The Docker engine may take a minute or two to start up. We have Docker Desktop. I am going to run a container called Hello World with the Docker Desktop graphical user interface. The Hello World container is a minimal Docker image designed to test whether Docker is installed and functioning correctly. Running the container will cause Docker to pull the image from Docker Hub, creates a container, and runs a simple program that prints a confirmation message. If you see the message, it confirms that the Docker engine, container networking, image download, and runtime execution are all working properly. I will go to the search bar and I'm going to type in hello world. The first option is the official image. I am going to press run. 
A new dialog box comes up to run a container. We can take a brief look at the optional settings in the GUI. You can name your container, you can set the paths to the volumes you are using on your host machine, as well as on the container, and you can set environment variables. I do not need to configure any of these, so I will press run. If we take a look at the log file for the container, we can see that we were able to run the container successfully and Docker is working correctly. In the top right corner, I am going to delete the container. Next, I'll show you how you can run a container with the Docker command line interface using PowerShell. I am going to bring up PowerShell. I do not need to run it as an administrator to access the Docker CLI. To make sure that the Docker CLI is working, I am going to run the command docker dash dash version. The Docker command worked. To run the hello world container, I am going to run docker run hello dash world. For the output, we can see that the Docker CLI and Docker Engine are working correctly. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, X, GitHub, Medium, and Odyssey. I also have a podcast called The Aspiring STEM Geek, which you can check out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for watching and happy coding.